also known as La Dolce Lisa. And today I have the most exciting video ever because today I'm going to be talking to you about gelato. But not just any gelato, this video is going to be the five best gelaterias in Rome. Now, I already have a blog post and I'll link it down in the description below because this blog post is very important. Over there, I believe I talk about maybe my top nine favorite gelaterias in Rome. The reason why I'm doing a top five is also based on location. So while you're checking out a certain important landmark in Rome, you can walk a short distance and find this gelateria close by, which is convenient and very important. Now you might be thinking, what makes you the gelato expert in Rome? Why do you know the best gelaterias? Well, I've lived in Rome on and off for about one year of my life. Ever since 2010, I've been going to Rome almost every single year. Sometimes I'd stay for a couple weeks, sometimes I'd stay for up to four months at a time. So I know Rome pretty well and I'm absolutely in love with gelato. You might not even know what gelato really is. It's just the Italian word for ice cream. Basically, think of your favorite ice cream and then times that by 100, that is what gelato is. The main difference between a gelato and ice cream, I personally feel like is the temperature. Our ice cream is kept at colder temperatures whereas gelato can be kept generally warmer. So you'll notice that it is just so creamy. I mean, on those hot days in Italy, it definitely melts down your hand as you're eating it, but I feel like that's part of the beauty and the experience of eating this gelato. As well, they both contain a similar ingredient list. However, gelato contains more milk than cream. Gelato is churned more slowly than ice cream, so it has less air, which adds to the creaminess factor. So this ice cream experience in Italy, eating gelato, it's like nothing you've ever had. And if you have had it before, and maybe you're heading to Rome this summer, and you wanna know which gelaterias to hit up while you're there, Check it out. So let's get started. Here are my top five favorite gelaterias in Rome, Italy. These are out of order, by the way. I'm just going to be randomly naming off any gelateria, but let's just start with the first one, and I feel like it is the most classic one, and it is definitely a gelateria that you should hit up at least once in your life if you're in Rome, because this is loved by tourists and locals alike. It is a very classic gelateria. A lot of people say it's one of the first gelaterias in Rome. I'm not exactly sure about that, but I do know that it is over 100 years old and a lot of famous people actually eat at this gelateria as well. The prices are still the same that you'll find anywhere else. I believe anywhere from two euros to even 250 euros for a small. And at this gelateria, don't forget to top it with panna because they're known to have a very good, delicious panna, which is basically whipped cream. It is of no extra cost, so if they ask you for panna, just say yeah, <laughs> if that's what you're into. Now this gelateria is called Joyliti. There are a couple locations of Joyliti. I believe I've even been to another one as well, but the most classic location is the home of the original location. That is on Via degli Uffici del Vicario 4040. This gelateria is relatively close to the Pantheon as well as the government offices in Italy. You'll see these big tall buildings. It is almost in a little hidden corner way, but as soon as you get close to that area, you'll be seeing a lot of traffic passing by, as in people, foot traffic, because everyone is heading towards that gelateria. It is one of the best and I just can't say enough good things about it. It is one of the first real amazing gelatos I remember having in Rome. Usually the gelaterias with a lot of ice cream flavors, I mean we're talking more than 50, they're usually not the greatest in quality. This is the rare exception where even though they do have a lot of different gelato flavors, I mean they even sell pastries and granitas and things like that. Despite having a lot of flavors, they are still delicious. They are absolutely fresh and made in house and just, I can't say enough good things. I love to get the Chocolato Fondente from Joyliti. It means dark chocolate and it is so dark and rich and it complements very nicely with any flavor really. I should say that I am partial to getting creamier flavors, so I'm not one for the fruitier flavors. I know that they really do have some good fruity, more sorbetto types, like sherbet types, where they really just make it with fresh fruits and sugar and that's basically it. I know those are really good as well, but I'm partial to the creamy ones, so I love my creamy gelatos. I love getting pistachio flavors, or like a really good zabayone flavor, or that chocolate fondente flavor is really good. I know that they do make a lot of unique flavors, 
like flavors with figs in them or flavors with cinnamon in them. They have a lot of classic flavors and they have a lot of um, unique and interesting flavors as well. So I feel like it is one of the most famous gelaterias in Rome and for good reason because it is also so delicious. So guys, don't forget to check out Joy Liti. Speaking of really good gelaterias that are always quite busy, I have to mention this one because this gelateria is very nostalgic for me. I remember being taken here and just thinking, wow, this is honestly one of the best gelatos that I've ever eaten. And it is quite popular, quite busy. Lots of people are always taking pictures of their gelato, Instagramming it. It's like really on trend not just for tourists but for locals as well but i definitely feel like a lot of tourists know about this gelateria this specific location because they also have one in trastevere the trastevere one is not as good for some reason i don't know maybe they just don't pile it high enough for me or maybe it's just because they don't have as many unique flavors as this specific location but this gelateria is called old bridge gelateria and it is right by the vatican it is on viale dei bastoni di michelangelo and it is in or around the vatican area so you really can't miss it it is a site to be held <laughs> if you end up visiting the vatican grab a gelato after you will not be sorry that you did there are usually lineups it just depends on what time of day you go sometimes you get lucky and there's only two people in line and then sometimes there's like a line wrapping around the wall but this gelato cannot be missed it is so creamy and rich and like fresh that it honestly will just be melting as you're eating it. I tend to get gelato in cups rather than in cones. My boyfriend would always get gelatos in brioches. I will talk about that in a second soon, but however you eat gelato, this place is very delicious. Now, I have to say that every time in Rome, I have to check out this specific location because they make a flavor that I love and it is called ricotta pistacchio. That is basically with ricotta cheese and pistachios, the nuts, and I don't know, there's just these crunchy pieces inside of like this creamy pistachio, maybe they use pistachio paste and like the chunks of the nuts and then with the ricotta as the base, it is just heaven. It is so good and so fresh. They also have a really good pinoli flavor, which is pine nuts. It is so unique and delicious and like I said, I tend to prefer the creamier flavors and I feel like this gelateria does the creamy flavors very well. They also had one called Sapori di Sicilia, which means they had pistachios, mandorla, which means almonds. They had some orange zest in there as well. I mean, it was just delicious. So try one of those. I don't think that they write the English name as well. So like I said, you just have to really brush up on your Italian or know what you want. But please don't go to Italy and order like a vanilla ice cream, unless that's your absolute favorite by all means. But try to experiment and order flavors that you might not get because that's what's so unique about having ice cream in Italy, or having gelato, I should say, is because the flavors that they think of are so unique and so delicious, you just can't get them back home. So please check out this gelateria, Old Bridge, you will not regret it. If you're visiting the Pantheon and you really want a delicious gelateria, this is right around the corner from the Pantheon. You do not have to walk far. The location is actually Via del Pantheon Cinquantuno, which is 51. And this gelateria is called Fiocco di Neve, which I believe means snowflakes. Now, this gelateria was actually closed for a period of time. I wasn't there when it was closed. I think it closed around sometime towards the end of last year early this year but it is open again finally and it makes one of the most delicious zabayone gelatos if you don't know what zabayone is i'm also going to link down below my recipe on how i make my zabayone it is basically a custard like dessert you can almost like eat it with a spoon or drink it like a beverage or mix it into things like tiramisu it is basically made from three ingredients marsala wine usually or any sweet dessert wine sugar and egg yolks so when you take those delicious ingredients and you turn it into a gelato which is almost like the base of gelatos to begin with i can't tell you how good this gelato is it is delicious every time i go to this gelateria i only get the zabayone flavor Sometimes I'll experiment and I'll add a flavor with it. I remember asking for zabayone and this chocolate rice flavor. It was chocolado riso, which sounds weird, but it was actually a nice compliment to the zabayone, which is so sweet and creamy to have something a little bit more with some more bitter notes. So I would usually ask for almost the entire cup of zabayone flavor gelato and I would ask for a little touch of that chocolate flavor. 
but I've never gotten anything else other than the Zabayone because I go there specifically for that flavor. So if you are visiting the beautiful Pantheon, you can grab the most amazing Zabayone gelato in all of Rome, I personally believe. I've never had a gelato flavor that's been better than the gelato at Fiocco di Neve, so you have to get the Zabayone flavor. I know that you can't go wrong with their Zabayone flavored gelato, but trust me guys, it is so delicious. You have to check out this gelateria just for their Zabayone flavor alone. Let me know because I know that you'll love it. Okay, another gelateria that I feel like I rediscovered last year in Rome. It's actually a gelateria that I went to before, but not that specific location. I feel like I went to another location, but the more convenient location would be to go to the one near Piazza del Popolo. If you are craving gelato, this gelato is really good. It is called Gelateria dei Gracchi. The location near Piazza del Popolo is on Via di Ripetta, 261, which is 261. Check this place out, it's really good, and they're known to make very unique flavors. They don't have as many gelateria flavors as, um, I guess I would say, as Giuliti to compare it to, but that's a good thing because gelaterias with a few flavors, you know that the few that they do make, they make very well. Similar to Old Bridge, which also doesn't have a lot of flavors, this one actually might have more than Old Bridge. The smaller the better, because the few flavors they have, you know they will make very well. Pistachio is one of my favorites, so I always get pistachio. When you see pistachio di Bronte, you know you're going to be eating a really good pistachio flavor because that comes from Sicily, and the pistachios there are just absolutely delicious. I remember also this gelato is standing out in my mind because me and my sister, we were obsessed with the chocolate rum flavor, chocolato rum. It's just a chocolate rum flavor gelato, but the chocolate is so rich and that like warm rum note in the ice cream was just, oh, it was like nothing else. It was so good. So we were just like in love with that flavor and we'd always go and get that flavor as well. There's also a flavor that I tried recently called Zibibo. I was actually asking the gelateria guy, what's this flavor? What, what does Zibibo mean? Because I had no idea. It's just a type of wine and in that specific sweet wine, they also had like I think raisins in it as well, but it was just like the most amazing creamy gelato flavor. That one was really good. If you're not sure about a flavor, ask them for recommendations. They'll usually even offer to let you try. This gelato is not too, too busy, depending on when you go, but I feel like here they're very friendly and accommodating and they usually want you to have a good gelato experience. So they will help you in translating flavors and making suggestions and letting you try some as well. This is also why I really like this gelateria. I've always had super nice people helping me out. So if you're in that area, check out this gelateria. It's very good. last of the top five gelaterias I'm going to be talking about and this is a gelateria that I discovered just last year when I was in Italy it was literally maybe three minutes away from Piazza Navona so it is a very nice piazza and I always love going there and there's a gelateria just down the street I believe yes it is on Via del Governo Vecchio 112 I think I'm saying that right Via del Governo Vecchio 112 this gelateria was always busy. I mean, there were always lines for this place. I literally had my Airbnb right down the street. So I would see that there were lines all the time. Some peak hours, of course, are way more intense than others. So it just depends on when you go. And by the way, I feel like every single gelateria that I've been mentioning is probably a four to five star gelateria if you check on TripAdvisor or Yelp or things like that. So these are also good recommendations not just by me and my personal taste, but by a lot of tourists as well. So you can trust me on this, but this is called, did I even mention the name? Okay, <laughs> I don't think I did. This gelateria is called Frigidarium. Now, they are very tiny. It's literally, I'm not gonna say a hole in the wall because it sounds so harsh, but I'm saying it's, it's like very tiny, a little tiny spot, like picture just like this big. It's so small, they obviously have very few flavors, which as now we know, as I keep repeating, it is a good thing to have just a few flavors. The only downfall is maybe that there are too few flavors every now and then, because I'm thinking, wow, what am I gonna get today? I mean, I wish I had some more options sometimes. But they do have very good flavors. A lot of people get the classic Frigidarium flavor because I believe that they will put a cute little cookie on top, but that's not my favorite flavor, I think. My favorite flavor that I've had from there has been, uh, I think it was like a cannoli flavor. I think they even called it Sicilian cannoli, cannoli di Sicilia or something. It was a really good flavor with, I believe, chocolate in it and some pistachio in it. 
and some candied fruits in it as well. It was really good with like a ricotta base. I remember my boyfriend really liking their tiramisu flavor there as well, which had the nice coffee notes, but also the creaminess that you get from tiramisu. That flavor was really good as well. Oh, and they also had a really good cherry flavor and the cherry flavor is known as amarena. Now, unlike a cherry sorbet or sorbetto that you would get, this cherry flavor was creamy, so it was almost with like a vanilla base, I guess. And I believe they do not have the English translations for these gelatos. So please, guys, feel free to just check or ask. I mean, usually in Italy on their gelatos, they do a good job at illustrating what will be inside. So you'll see the amarena flavor with cherries on top. You'll see the tiramisu flavor with maybe like a coffee bean or things like that, you know? So they really tried to highlight what is in the gelato so you kind of get a good idea. My boyfriend did get his gelato in a brioche and I said I would try to explain that. So you might already know what a brioche is, but it's basically a sweet bread that usually people will have for breakfast. So it's like a breakfast um, soft bun. And what they will do is they'll slice that open and they'll put at least three scoops of gelato in that brioche bun. When you're eating, like, it's almost like eating a true ice cream sandwich. When you're eating that, it's like another gelato experience to just get that brioche bun that is smeared inside with that delicious, fresh gelato. My boyfriend kept getting the brioches and I'd always pick up his brioche and dip it in my ice cream too because it was so good. So I highly recommend getting your gelato at least maybe one time in a brioche bun. It is very delicious and I know that they do have them at, of course, most gelaterias, but I know for sure at this Frigidarium because that's where he got it from and he loved it. He'd always get it. So that sweet bread with that creamy gelato makes for the best ice cream sandwich in Italy. Now, I think I've talked about my top five flavors. Like I said, I hate to be repeating myself, but please check out my blog post on ladolcelisa.com. I will link that specific gelato post down below in the description box, so check that out. I will also be linking my Zabayone recipe because I think you can tell I'm obsessed with Zabayone. Now, I hope that this video was informative to you guys. If you are lucky enough to be going to Rome, it is one of my favorite cities in the world. I think it is my favorite city in the world. So I hope you do enjoy your time there. The food there is amazing. I will also link down below my Italy vlogs from last year because I feel like I ate at a lot of these gelaterias and ate at a lot of amazing restaurants. If you guys want some insider information and you want to see me eating at some good places, check these vlogs out. I have a playlist, so you can even go to my playlist section and find my Italy vlogs. So I will just link that playlist down below as well in the description bar. Rome has some of the best street food from their pizza al taglio to their um, suppliz, which are sort of like arancinis. I know really good restaurants as well. So if you guys want another video, maybe like the best restaurants in Rome or like the best dishes to eat in Rome or the best street food in Rome, please let me know in the comments below or by liking this video so that I have an idea that you guys do enjoy these travel type videos where I talk you through some of my favorite like locations or like things to hit up. I mean, I'm such a foodie, so food is so important to me. I literally plan my trips around what I'm going to be eating in certain cities. That might sound crazy, but I feel like Food just connects us. So the best way to see a country is to literally taste it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see all of you gelato or roll lovers in my next video. Bye guys.